Okay, everybody, welcome to Down the Middle with Max and Los. I am Los, that is Max, and today's topics uh, that we are covering, we're starting off with, should Trump run in 2024? If you look at the polls right now, uh, Biden is not looking too hot, uh, and it seems like Trump or pretty much, I think, anybody that was not Biden right now uh, would have a lot more success. What is your opinion right now on this? It's interesting. So the, the recent poll that I saw, um, it wasn't from Quinnipiac. It was from another like really like legit poll source. It's usually not biased to the right, so it's usually pretty preferential to the left. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was like 47, 46 Trump over Biden if the election was today. Um, and then like Biden versus DeSantis, it was not very close. But again, DeSantis is a governor, doesn't have the same name recognition, has a few years to build up. Um, I mean, I, I'm torn on this because we have a, a business that does very, very well with uh, when Trump's president um, and when he's talking and much more active. At the same time, I, I think our country needs something different, right? I think from a, a policy standpoint, uh, Trump did quite a few things actually that were, were pretty great on both a, a social and an economic front. Um, the problem is he just can't stop talking. He can't, yeah. he can't control his ego and he can't control his ability to not get uh, egged on into getting into fights and retweeting stuff and, and, and nobody can control him. Nobody can handle him. And that's even his problem now. Like his problem now is that I think if he and uh, Shapiro was talking about this the other day, we, I'm actually on the way here. So listen to this. He's now really pushing this, you know, the Arizona recount, even though the recount came out as we said he lost by more votes, so it went in Biden's favor. He's still talking about the election right. in 2020. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, it's Biden is making every mistake possible. Like, Biden right now is, if he doesn't get this infrastructure bill, this reconciliation bill, and the things he's doing right now through, like, his presidency is basically done. Like everything he pushed for is going to fail. Right. And with Afghanistan, with COVID, like it's a, it's a failed presidency. I don't care what what political viewpoint you are. And like a lot of Democrats are even seeing this, right? Like I think it's only like 60% of Democrats want him to run again. It's like almost half of Democrats don't want the sitting president to run again for president. That's like, that's really bad. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I, I think Trump, if he just stayed quiet, if he did the, if he pulled the, the Biden playbook, right? The Biden playbook don't talk for the last election was stay in the basement, don't say anything basically, and let the other guy basically talk himself out of the office. And that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, if Trump kind of did the same thing and just kind of stayed out of it, kind of helped behind the scenes with some people, and then started really hitting hard in the year or so, and hitting it hard based on all Biden's failures. Hey, look, when I was president, we had this, this, and this. When Biden became president, that you know. Failure in Afghanistan, Taliban's resurging, COVID hasn't gotten control, right? All these things, much better shot, at least getting those middle voters. Mm-hmm. And that, but again, that's his, his problem is he, he, the, the middle, right? The moderates, the people that are kind of libertarians, undecided, don't want to vote for Biden, but also have a problem with the way Trump speaks and all the personal stuff. If he could just get rid of that, I think 2024 would actually be a, a shoe in. So I, I do not like Biden or anything he's done. Can't tell me that he's done anything great. Uh, that's just my opinion. That's why it's called down the middle. You can have your opinion, whatever. Uh, I don't think that Trump should run because he's a me- megalomaniac. Yeah. Like it, that's not going to, that's going to consistently create more divide. That's not something that you need. I think he should put all his efforts into helping the new Republican potential candidate run. And I think that guy should be DeSantis. He got three more years and then pushing in the elections for Ron to DeSantis to go from governor to potentially look for, for president. I'm totally making this up, but I think that's, what's going to happen. I think he's the most outspoken in the in the right, which you're voting Republican or Democrat in this particular situation, right? Um, he's the most like recognized right now. He's doing the most uh, talking. And if Trump could be a supporter to that, I think that would give him all the votes, the, all the push that he needs on the people that don't know who he is. Because obviously I know a lot about him. I, I'm very tied into like what's happening in Florida specifically. We, we both live in Orlando. Um, and I think he's mature enough to, you know, 
strategically be able to like go back and forth with Biden, not on some insulting Twitter stuff, on some real practical conversational topics and not look like he's just looking to be a bully or fight. And also support people on the left and address concerns and th- just be able to talk. Like neither one of these presidents can talk. One one is a is a leader that he can talk and like m- move, but not necessarily in the best way. And that would be Trump, right? Like he's going to piss a lot of people off with his thoughts. And the other one just can't speak at all. And so you don't need either one. You need someone who can kind of be in the middle and not some wherever he lies, Republican or Democratic, like that. Pr- that's going to obviously sway some certain things. But they've got to be able to. St- like Barack Obama, like brought people together, whether you were a Republican or a Democrat, he brought people together. Yep, at and least during the first, his first run. Right, right, right. And I think that's, that's the kind of person that you need here. And I just don't think that that would be Trump. And I, I think that there's just so much hatred for the guy that, well, you know what, statistically speaking, I might be wrong because if everyone doesn't want to vote, he could, he could win the election. I think if they did it in 2024 and he ran, I think he'd win. But I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to get uh, somebody else. He's going to push for someone else. But what we need and what we deserve as a country, as Americans, is to be able to vote for somebody for president that we actually want to be president. Right. And this is what's it's nuts. Like, this is, this is crazy to me that for se- it seems like for several election cycles, um, people, most people have basically been voting for, like, who they hate least. Right, and that's right. nailed it. Like, it definitely was Trump, Hillary. That was 100% people. I mean, some people were fired about Trump, but, like, most people was like, I'm voting for Trump I because hate I the just hate Hillary. I yeah. think Clintons are the worst. Like, And then Biden, Trump, same thing. It's like, I'm voting for Biden because I, can't I just Trump. can't stand Trump. And, like, you think with a country where the, where the greatest empire in history, the, the American empire, like, we, we've the innovation, what we've done in 300 years, like is incredible. We have this massive population, hundreds of millions of people, diversity, all this stuff. And the fact that every four years we get, you know, two 70 year old plus white dudes, basically who people, most people hate right. trying to run the country is insane that we can't get a, a quality, somebody that people believe in. Somebody people actually say like, who's 50. This person, I tr- this person, I think, can actually take us to the next level. This person can actually solve world problems. This person can actually solve global problems. Like, just can, can make the country and the world better. And we need that. But the problem is we're a two-party system, and both those parties pick somebody to run based on the nomination process in the primaries who has the best chance of beating the next person, mm-hmm. not who actually is the best candidate. Right. Or like, even if you're thinking about, like, I'm not a Bernie Sanders fan at all. I, I'm totally against everything Bernie Sanders believes in as a politician, economically, politically, like everything. However, the guy actually had a strong viewpoint that he'd been consistent with his entire career. He had plans and policies. He had a lot of energized support. People that actually really believed in him. That were, If I vote for this guy, it's change, real right, change. Right. They didn't pick him, even though he probably you know would have, beating Biden because the polls, all the numbers, and all the data people said he has the, he's not going to beat Trump. So we need to put Biden up there because Biden's going to beat Trump. It's the same reason they picked Kamala to be his VP. Right. They did not, and this is again, to me, this is the ultimate form, in my opinion, of sexism and racism is like right. what Democrats do a lot. And not just Democrats, but a lot of people do this, but the Democrats did it in that. Like, if, if you can sit there with a straight face and tell me that Democrats put Kamala Harris as the VP because of her her popularity and her views, not the fact that she was a black woman, I'll give you a million dollars. But there's no way. Nobody can sit there and say that she was the best candidate for that role. Right. She had publicly bashed Biden on stage, called him a racist and Uncle Tom, all this stuff, multiple times. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, okay, you're, you, you're, guys are friends. You, you check off all the boxes for us. You check all the diversity boxes. We'll put you in there. Like To me, that's like, that's... You're, you're giving somebody a role not because of their qualifications, but because of their gender or their race. Like, that's, that's insane to me. But I, I just think it's, um, like, we, we need somebody. We need somebody young. We need, like, a, like a, a JFK. Right? Dude, like it, somebody it would, that people can get behind. It'd be nice to have a 50-year-old. Like, I think or there change, should be a yeah. rule. Hey, dude, you're hitting 77. Like, no, that's not going to work. You know, like, it's, you're getting old. Like We're, you, seeing, it. We're seeing it first hand with Biden. I mean, right. The dude is, again... 
I don't care whether you're a Democrat, independent, Republican. If you watch multiple hours of speeches can't of Biden, there's no way you can sit there and say that guy is sharp. No. That guy is bright and he's, he's got it. He came up with an idea. Like, you can't say that. He is sitting there reading a speech. Every single speech he gives, at the end of it, he's handed a list of people to call on. And when he gets to the end of the list, he says, uh, the people, they, they told me I can only... Uh, he's saying they. They told me I can only speak to these people. They told me these are all the questions I can answer. Every single time. Like, he's he being run a by a bunch of other people that have agendas that are wheeling him out there and saying, speak for 30 minutes, people know you're alive, and then we're going to wheel you off, and we'll run the country while you just, you know, drink some insure in the bathroom. <laughs> like, I don't know. It, I, I don't know how anybody can be like, this guy is a great president to have. It's no. crazy. And if, if you do, drop it in the comments. We want to hear you and, and debate yeah. you. We'll, we'll bring you on down the middle. Yeah. Uh, all right. I know you got to run, so let's just talk real quickly about one more. We'll keep it easy on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm on my way on my way back home. I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, I'm picking up some stuff at the store, so I, I'm getting burgers for my girls today uh, just so I could listen to this more. The Joe Rogan and Patrick Brett David podcast. I personally think it's the coolest podcast that just came out because that dude, was a, he's us. Like he speaks for like the internet marketer, entrepreneur, influencer that makes content about whatever. Like, and he got recognized to the point where like, and, and I know, I get it. He's got significantly sized businesses. He actually, and, but so, so, you know, we're all the same guy. It's just he to get put into the Joe Rogan thing, I think is super dope and like almost like a win for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was really cool seeing it when I saw it. <laughs> Did the, you hear it? Yeah. Listen to it as soon as it came out. Um, it's a it's, it's a really, really good interview. Um, What's interesting about it is having two people that are both big podcasters and very good interviewers talking to each other was very interesting because out of all the Rogan episodes, I've listened, I've listened to every single one of them. Yeah. I've listened to a lot of them. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot about Rogan on it because Patrick asked a you know, lot of questions. Yeah. He asked a lot of questions about like, what would you do here? How would you handle this? What do you think about this? So it was pretty cool because I learned a lot about Patrick David, but I also learned a lot about Joe Rogan. And so having two interviewers essentially doing an interview is always fascinating. The insights you get out of that. Because usually it's, just, it's pretty somebody a guest conversations, yeah. who's not an inter professional speaker. Yeah. And Rogan's just kind of asking the questions and driving, he's driving the narrative mm -hmm. and they're just responding and yeah. reactive. But this was kind of a, a more back and forth between the two of them. Right. Uh, have you heard the one with Patrick Rick David when he interviews Ray Dalio? I don't think so. It's really, it's on, uh, I don't think he has a podcast or if not, I've never heard he it. He launched one. So it's Valuetainment is his YouTube, but then right. he, it's the Patrick Bet David podcast. I okay. think he just launched a podcast. Uh, just Google, uh, he it's on video. Obviously they're like outside really good conversations of like Ray Dalio. That's also like just a badass thing to do to interview Ray Dalio. Yeah. That's one of my favorite books ever. Um, so like that's, that's a really good listen to. Um, and for our last, our last topic here of the day, uh, cause we're running out of time, uh, kind of going back to COVID, but just, I think it's kind of crazy. NBA players now are not allowed this. This is weird. So NBA players are not allowed to play at their home. Let's, uh, Kyrie Irving plays for the Brooklyn Nets. He is not allowed to play when he plays in Brooklyn because he didn't have the vaccine. But if he goes somewhere else, he can play. The rules on this stuff is just getting so ridiculous. And it's not a New York thing or whatever. Like uh, someone in the Golden State Warriors did the same thing. Like he can't play. It's just kind of how it works now. But I can get on a plane with everyone else and I can fly to play against Chicago. Like what is happening to the world right now? Like I think this COVID thing has just gotten like, and this is probably one of the last times we'll bring it up because it's been getting brought up a lot with us. But I mean, it's it's on the news it's every day. It's like it's it's hard for us not to discuss it. And I just thought very interestingly, like, you know, if you can't play, like, I guess you're out for the season. Like you can't play basketball, but you can play. You can't play where you live, but you can definitely get on our jet and play elsewhere. Like I don't I don't I don't understand the yeah, logic. Is, I think that's the frustrating part for a lot of people is not necessarily any one of the rules it's the inconsistency in the logic behind the rules right right and so at the end of the day what's been proven is the the, the, the data shows that the vaccine helps prevent getting as much so it decreases the likelihood you're going to get it 
and it decreases the severity if you do get it of going to the hospital or death, right? So there's data that shows that, but it also shows that you can still get it. It's not a brick wall, right? So what they should do if you really like consistent, frequent testing, right? Give people the option that you can get vaccinated, but also I'm sure the NBA players are being tested every day. I'm sure. Right. Right. Like I'm sure they're being tested maybe multiple times a day. So that should be, in my opinion, good enough. It's like, okay, we're testing before you come into the, the arena. If you're negative, you can play today. There's no risk, right? Mm-hmm. It's like if you're, if you get a negative test or multiple negative tests, like you're, you should be able to play the game. And this is what's also, I don't understand, what I don't understand is this is again where people get frustrated is you can't have an argument saying, get the vaccine. The vaccines are so good. They're so strong. They work really well, which I believe that's why I got it. Right. Mm-hmm. Because you told us all that. Right. But at the same time, say that you should be in fear. Like all the people that are vaccinated that are so bothered by other people not getting vaccinated. Like again, this goes back to the last episode. I don't care. Like I got the vaccine. I'm protected. I, I did what I wanted to do to protect myself and my family. So if you want to not get it, that's on you. Right. Like it, it's, I'm as protected as I can be. Right. As long as you're not sitting in my face, coughing in my face for an hour, like, okay, we're good. If you're over there and I'm over here, like you want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I don't, right. I don't care anymore. I'm moving on with my life. I got the vaccine. <laughs> right. I'm moving on with my life. Yeah. Same with the NBA. If most players in the NBA are vaccinated, if the staff is vaccinated, if the, the coaches are vaccinated and a handful of players don't like who let them get sick. Yeah. It's, it's on them. Like right. they're, if they get it, Sucks. If you're going to be in the hospital, sucks. You're, you're maybe out for the season. Like that's a, a risk reward decision that person is making. That, that's an individual making it, but their decision is not impacting other people because all the other people are, they're in this bubble. They're vaccinated. They're testing. And you're at the peak of your health. Other thing, young, healthy, the, the numbers, if you look at this of people that are, you know, not 65 and over that don't have comor- comorbidities that don't have all these issues, the numbers of hospitalizations is really low. And then out of the hospitalizations, numbers of deaths. I mean, we're, we're talking here, we're talking flu numbers, less than the worst, not, not as bad as the flu. Like these are superhuman athletes. These people are on every vitamin, supplement, diet, health, cardio, like all these things. And they have these devices like this whoop band and stuff like right. whoop. Now if whoop 4.0 is coming out. It tracks my skin temperature. It tracks my heart rate var- variability, it tracks my blood oxygen level and knows my averages and can show outliers. So the early warning systems, they ha- and I think a lot of the NBA actually, because LeBron's part of this company, have it. So there's all these devices they, they have, one? this technology. Uh, you just got to upgrade for the year. Okay. Smart move. They say 4.0 is free if you're a member. But what they do at checkout is you got to upgrade. It makes you pay for a year in advance, which is like 289 to get okay. it. Which I did because it's an awesome product. Right, I'm about to um, get it. But yeah, it's like, I, I just, I don't understand this like, fervor that people have of people are getting so worked up over individuals in these situations where there's in the grand scheme of things, very, very, very minor risk. And that risk is to basically individuals that are vaccinated. Yeah. It's never going to change. It's just, it's, it's crazy. I don't even know how to, how to deal with it, but you, you've got to move on. So next week, guys, we're talking a little bit more about social media. We're going to talk a little bit more about marketing topics. One quick marketing thing that I wanted to bring up before we go. Uh, I am hosting a um, organic TikTok growth thing, which you can't actually get access to because you got to be in our group. But Max is hosting a paid TikTok, how to understand TikTok and be able to spend money on TikTok. And most of the people listening, uh, the majority come from some sort of background in advertising, marketing, or building businesses online. So if you guys are interested on checking out Max's thing first, and then when uh, I push mine out, we'll be working with Max on that as well. Uh, Go to the TikTok Masterclass. Uh, TikTok Ads Masterclass. TikTok Ads Masterclass dot com. You'll sign up. I think it is in 15 days. Well, October, by, October 15th. It'll be October 15th when this launches, guys. It's going to be the most in-depth, best thing possible for you. If you run ads already and you're looking for a new channel, uh, I definitely recommend it to everybody. Max is, in my opinion, one of the top two uh, best media buyers in the world, along with Kevin Pern, which most people are not going to know that guy. Uh, but, yeah, I, I love Max, admire him on, on the media buying side of everything and on the marketing side. So you guys should definitely go check that out. And when the organic thing comes in, we'll probably put it all together and make it a yeah. whole system. So that's it for me and Max, guys. We appreciate you guys. Please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. See you guys. Bye.